Today we have David Sebastian here with Imprint Entertainment. And first of all, congratulations on your latest release, America on Fire. Thank you, to, thank you. I wanted to ask you, you produced the video, right? Yep, I produced it. I wanted to ask you, how was the experience? How did you felt it? It was fun. Um, it's kind of like God, you know, how God created the world in seven days. I was creating a video. In seven days? Uh, no, like three. <laughs> Okay. The, wow. when the, that says a lot about me. God did. Uh, wow. Okay. When the truck was moving, you actually were on the top of the truck. Of course. Yeah. I'm like Tom Cruise. I do oh, all my okay. stunts. Yeah. Very well. Um, the song has very powerful lyrics and very powerful message. Are you satisfied with the results of the song or? What do you mean? Satisfied with the results? What does that mean? Like uh, the impact it had on people uh, was the idea you have was what you <laughs> proposed with? Um, not really, no. Because uh, where are you at right now? Uh, I'm in South America. Okay, so you're in South America. So I'm in America. And I'm pretty sure much like South America, when you say shit that people don't want to hear, you say the truth you know, it gets suppressed. So, you know, a lot, my video hasn't really been doing as well as it can be on certain platforms because the numbers are being suppressed, ads won't be run, shit like that. So, but, you okay. know, the people who have heard it are impacted by it and they love it and they think it's great and it is very powerful. And this video and song is one of the most powerful combinations of a record that has come out in a long time. But, can it have more impact? Yes. And I believe it will. You know, God will make a way. Yes. And maybe with time and with more publicity and all, it, it may reach a lot of places. That's why, I'm on a, that's why I'm on this call with you. You're supposed to be getting me South America so they could. Of know. course, I am. Exactly. I am. I am. Uh, also, I, I saw your, your post on Instagram yesterday mm -hmm. and it was, it was very strong too. And uh, it got me thinking that you have uh, some power uh, when you say things. The message uh, also reaches more people um, because of your music popularity. The, yeah. And that people, uh, in some sense, <clears throat> look up to you. So they listen in a, in a different way, the, the yeah. things you say. You, you are aware of that power you have? Of course. I mean, with great power comes great responsibility. And... You're, you ever heard the saying that the, uh, a t what is it? Your tongue is a sword. Uh, I don't know. I, it's too early for me to think of poignant metaphors, but anything you say carries power, right? Whether you say the truth, whether you lie, whether you, whatever, everything has an intention. So as you're speaking, you know, people are going to gravitate to it. And when you speak the truth, people resonate with the truth. You know, that's why some of the biggest artists like Tupac and Biggie and even Kanye at his height, they were honestly just speaking truth, you know, truth about the society, truth about everything. So that's all I do is just speak my truth. And some people follow and, and, and resonate with it. So I'm aware. Yes. But it's, it's very good. Uh, in some sense, you speak for many that can't speak and can't be heard. So it's good that you you speak for them in some way. You know what's weird? <clears throat> is I'm on, I'm on this thing called the internet every day, right? And I follow a lot of rappers. I follow a lot of artists. follow designers. A lot of famous people. And it seems like I'd be the only one really talking that shit. Like the real shit. Like not like the fabricated my publicist told me to write this like generic like I'm sad about you know what's going on but like really like yo it's some real shit happening here you know what I mean like I don't know I wonder why people don't say more of the truths that they know and resonate with maybe it's fear I don't know I don't know but thanks we have you there you go and which would you say is your more uh, trans transcendent song? I have a song called The Light. It's one of my favorite songs. It's very transcendent. It's called uh, The Light. I was going to ask you if it was your favorite. So 
It's both transcendent and your favorite. Yeah, I think it's one of the best songs I've ever written because uh, I know 65 year olds who love that song. I know six year olds that love that song. I know gangsters that love that song. You know what I mean? I, 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 it's just, it has no genre. It has no gender. It has no age. It's just For us, univers uh, universally catchy. Very good. And in an interview uh, on February with the Homegrown Radio, mm -hmm. you said that you burnt your hand in an experience, in an experiment. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Let's see the, the bubble. Ah, uh, okay. Um, because you you said that uh, pain was a perception of the brain and mm -hmm. we could control it, right? 100%. You see this? Uh, oh, shit. See, but, I didn't feel anything. I didn't feel anything. Okay. But the fire, the how we went with the experiment. You really you, didn't... Of course. Yeah, I don't lie. I don't lie. I mean, listen. You know, you've heard of Jesus, this guy named Jesus, right? God's son, right? So if you take away all the like ethereal things written about this man named Jesus, right? That, you know, he rose on the third day and he like all this, all the religious things, right? Essentially, he was a man who kicked it with bombs and homeless people who went around his community telling the truth, not telling people to worship him, but telling people that all things are possible with faith, right? And that got some people mad. That got the oppressive government mad. There's like, who is this dude named Jesus telling people that they can, you know what I mean? Do all this shit and he's walking on water, he's turning water into wine, all that. I believe that with faith, true faith, you can you can do anything. You can fly. You can walk on water. You can turn water into water. You can do anything you want. So I'm at the point where fire or some shit like that doesn't really affect me anymore because I've mastered my mind. But you know, I'm still there's still things that I you know I can't walk on water. I can't do shit like that yet. You know, <laughs> yet because I feel yes. like yeah, exactly yet. Because I, you know, one of my goals as a as a as a human being, like a human being, is to ascend this the human constructs in this third dimensional prison that we live in, and that's kind of deep. But you know, this reality really is a prison. You know, and once you escape the the confines of that prison, then you can really do anything. Yo, sorry, are you sorry? Are you on this call? Can you hear me? Yeah, I yes, I can hear you. Yo, should I should I show her I could fly and jump off the balcony for the for the interview? I yes? think we should say I, I think we should save that for the next one. Okay, okay, okay. I was gonna show you. Better, I could, yes. Yeah, better, right? <laughs> yeah. I believe you. It's, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> you were a kid. You always wanted to be a rapper. You always saw yourself as a singer, writer, producer. No. No, no, no. Um, growing up, the first thing I wanted to be was a cardiologist, heart surgeon. And I wanted to be a cardiologist because it was a long word and no one expected a five-year-old to be a cardiologist. So I was like, I'm gonna be a cardiologist. But I never wanted to really be a cardiologist. I could give a shit about the medical field. But um, then, you know, I'm an artist, you know, like all the art in my house, like I'm a, I'm a fine artist, you know? So I wanted to really be just, an artist. To be honest with you, now that I'm thinking about it, for a long period of my life, when I was like younger, I didn't really know what I was gonna do. It, it didn't really, really strike me. Like I, I kind of was just, I was just focused on being a bad kid. You know, I was like really, really bad. And I got in a lot of trouble and I wasn't really thinking about the future. But um, the first CD I ever got was Jay-Z's uh, Blueprint two album that my mom got and then the second album uh my church my church sunday school teacher got me was kanye west college dropout and i fell in love with those albums and my mom let me listen to them and you know i love kanye for his expressionism and you know how vulnerable and honest he was and as a kid you know as a black man or a black kid at that time 
you know, all the perspectives leading up to then were all like self-destructive and all like, you know, I sell drugs, I got bitches, big pimp and, you know, but to hear someone like a Kanye West, you know, who had a backpack and who talked about, you know, Jesus walks and all these things that were kind of in my world, it kind of empowered me to want to do the same thing. So then I just started making music and here we are now. Well, very well. And what what piece of advice would you tell yourself when you were 17? I don't know if you understood me. Um, uh, yeah, I, 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 I understand. Okay. I understand. Um, to not listen to anybody. I would give myself a lot of fucking advice. One, stay away from somebody, but um, not to listen to anybody. Like David, your journey is long and your road is long. It's not all gonna come to you. It's not gonna be easy. Everything you want, you're eventually gonna get. You're gonna get the money, success, the girls, all that dumb shit. It's gonna come, but along the way, people are gonna give you a lot of opinions. They're gonna tell you what you should do, what you're not doing, what you should do more of. Don't listen to any of those fucking people because they haven't done it. And they're not you. No one can tell you, David, how to be more David than David. So I wish I would have learned that because I wasted a lot of years in this circular bullshit of just opinions, you know? Yes. And what advice would you tell uh, young musicians that are starting and are in that struggle? What would I tell a young musician? that there's no such thing as perfect, that you are a slave to your perception of what perfect is and what your abilities could be and what your expression should be. And you're, you're wound up in some idea that doesn't even exist. I know a lot of really talented people, people who are more talented than me, but they, they won't release music. They won't, they won't, do anything with their gifts they won't paint that picture they won't do anything because they're waiting yeah, for true. some there's some circumstance some gust of wind some wonderful day some magic fucking moment and it doesn't exist you know um everything has flaws in it you know like for instance like this america on fire record you know or take for instance the video right so i edited the video i colored the video i did a lot of stuff with the video and we hit a deadline and I wanted to fix like four or five things. And, it's, and I didn't get a chance to fix it. It still irks me right now. But I said, fuck it, let it go, right? So it's out right now. And I guarantee you don't know the five things that I wanted to change and no one else does, but I know it, you know what I mean? But it doesn't matter. So I think, yeah, nothing's perfect. Just put shit out and just continue to push it out. I hope this advice would be heard by someone who needs it. And well, um, lastly, uh, how do you see yourself in seven years, professionally speaking? What language do you speak? Spanish, sorry. <laughs> no, 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 I, I just, I just want to know. I, I love your accent, it's really nice. <laughs> um, Thanks. Yeah, uh, where do I see myself seven years from now? I see myself, living in a dome compound on a two, 300 acre property. But in like a, in, with music, how, how, what projects do you have? No, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I'm That's getting there. So I see me living in this big glass dome on this 200 foot property. I mean, 200 acre property. And all of my expressions have actualized themselves. I've built hotels. I've had Emmy and Oscar award-winning films. I have Grammy winning albums. I have restaurants that I've built all around the world. Some oh. that are free to just help the homeless. Um, I've, I've actualized all of my fantasies. And now I'm sitting looking at the sun wondering what's next. It's a good, it's a good image. 
But so you would want music, to- music and music is music is just a conduit. You know, like I love music. Music is my expression, but music is just the seed that will okay. grow the tree of this trillion dollar enterprise. So you would want to to start in the in the film industry? Of course. I, I already directed a film. I, I do I do everything. Yeah. The only thing I can't do is walk on water. I told you. I'm working on it though. Wow. It's a matter of time. <laughs> For real. I'm glad you believe it. You believe <laughs> it? Listen, if you really believe, see, that's the thing, right? And then I know you know the interview's winding down, but the way belief works is a lot of people have dreams, right? And they have belief systems. But if you have someone around you or next to you that doesn't believe in you, then it kind of like waters down your dream because you believe in it. But then some people are like, you can't do that. You'll never do that. And then those seeds start to sink into your subconscious. So if you believe I could walk on water and then he believes I could walk on water and I believe it, then it has to happen. I mean, look at you, look at you right now. Look at life right now. All we are is a collective of beliefs that materialize into mass consciousness. You you could also study sociology. I do. Ah, you do? And psychology. And and fucking <laughs> <laughs> study everything. You know what I mean? That's what that's how I read. <laughs> Ah, well, very well. This is David Sebastian, and I am here with Imprint Entertainment.